But do you see the possibility that information like this might be better held back from the public domain because some people might be influenced by it and not look at it in proper detail? Well, the Scottish taxpayer has been conned into funding research showing things that anyone with any historical knowledge already knew. Um, in the 19th century, there were no controls of any kind on the sale and consumption of recreational drugs. Sir Walter Scott, Charles Dickens, Benjamin Israeli, William Ewart Gladstone, they were all opium users, and heroin is just a purified form of opium. They suffered no evident ill effects from this. Before 1920, we had no drug problem because drugs were entirely legal. We have now had 85 years of increasingly severe prohibition, and we've ended up with a gigantic problem. If the politicians and the various prohibitionist um, groups had any interest in truth rather than mouthing tired platitudes, they'd throw up their hands and say, look, 85 years of drug prohibition have not succeeded. Let's make a clean start. Let's legalize drugs and go back to the situation we had in this country before 1920 when there was no drugs problem and uh, probably the great majority of drug users at the moment, recreational drug users, do not suffer any evident ill effects. Well, okay. Alistair, Alistair Ramsey, if I, if I could bring him in, obviously it's a very radical idea, it's not one that any major political party is even looking at, but it's, it doesn't have a logic to it. It's a logical argument in an interesting academic debate, but that's all it is. I think what we've got to, to switch away from is a focus on substance and look at why do people use drugs, why do they keep using them, and why do some people get compromised and get into difficulty legally and in terms of their health. In Scotland just now, we have over 50,000 people who have got problems with heroin to do with their health or their legal status or whatever. That but but cannot... Do Dr Gab is suggesting that a large part of, a large reason behind that is, is the, the criminality of it. That, that there is no criminality related to poor health. If you take a substance which breaks your health down, then that's nothing to do with criminality. That's to do with the way that your body reacts and the kind of um, social circumstances in which you find yourself. Um, there are many interesting academic debates around the issues that Dr. Gab has raised, but this is not one which is going to mean very much Doctor, to the people who have got problems with their health Doctor, or their heroin uh, use in Scotland. Dr. Gab, will come back to you in just a yeah. second. Dr. Gab, what do you say to that? Um, what I'm saying is that if people choose to destroy themselves, I don't see that it's any of our business. Uh, people take drugs because they want to. Some, most people probably manage it quite well, a minority of people don't. But uh, for the sake of saving a minority of people who are inclined to destroy themselves in any event, is it just to turn the entire country into some gigantic open-air prison where we're watched? most of our lives and prevented from, uh, prevent from doing as you please and where our civil liberties are endlessly compromised. No thank you, no. Can I, can I add something to this because I'm very concerned about that type of message. That depends on if you can afford to fund your habit. At the moment we have something like 50,000 drug users who are funding their habit on buying street drugs, funding could, their could habit it, by could crime. Could I put it to you that because drugs are are criminalised, they're more expensive and therefore that creates the I, market. That's one part of it, but the other part of it is we have now something like 18,735 injecting intravenous drug users, if you like, uh, all of whom uh, may or may not be hepatitis C positive. And we have to think of the future here and, and my concern now is the, the hepatitis C sufferers at the moment may not be showing any symptoms. 15, 20 years down the road, they are going to be the bed blockers of the future, and that's not a criticism. We're going to have people who may need hospital attention. At the moment, it's hard enough to get hospital places anyway. Um, so we have to look at that, and it's about being responsible. I, I would love to be able to agree with Dr Gab's argument, but I think we've come too far down the road now. Briefly, Dr Gab, haven't we come too far down the road? And if you were to decriminalise drugs then it would increase greatly the number of addicts apart from anything else. Yeah, look, I'm sick of this talk of sending out messages. I'm interested in the truth. And the truth is that as far as most people are concerned, drugs do not screw you up. For the minority who are screwed up by drugs, I'm afraid 50, you cannot use the criminal law to save people from their own folly. OK, Dr Gab, Alistair Ramsey, John and Jess, we have to leave it there, but thank you very much indeed for joining us.